morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm glad you're here. Uh, the band's running a little late, but we're going to go ahead and get started with the time. Uh, we're so thankful you're here. Let's turn to number three, 633. 633. Jesus loves even me. Let's all stand, please, as we sing this song. This is, turns out I'm so glad. So put a smile on your face this morning and just say, I am so glad that my Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Oh, I forget him and wander away. Still he doth love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I plead. When I remember that Jesus loves me. standing and we'll say our pledge. So glad you're here today. All right, let's say it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you. You may be seated. You may be seated. All right, you guys just got here. You're still taking your coats off and stuff. How about Brett and Ben? Would you come up and do the Sunday school offering this morning? How do you guys do it? They're just settled, getting settled in. All right, appreciate you guys doing that for us. Let's pray. We'll give our offerings to Jesus this morning. Lord, thank you so much for this day again you've given to us. We love you, Lord, and we know you love us because of all you do for us. I pray that we'll just remember that as we give this morning and, and uh, be cheerful about it, uh, it knowing that me. you have us uh, as your family, you have our children, and you're going to take care of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
children. Glad you're here today. Good to see everybody here. I want to just mention a couple of things real quick that uh, are probably not in your bulletin at this time because all of these um, meeting uh, numbers that we talked about and dates that we talked about Friday night haven't been transposed and put into a form for Lee, but she'll be getting some of these into the bulletin. We had a great time, though. It was a good, good time of fellowship as we talked about our uh, next few months all the way through August, VBS and all of that. That's all exciting. But coming up, because of the building, we're having a building committee meeting on March 2nd, okay? Mark that on your calendar. We'll make sure that gets in the bulletin. On March the 3rd, there's a deep clean of the nursery. Is that how it, what it's called, Heather? <coughs> you mentioned Hannah. that? Yeah. That's That's Hannah. Hannah. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not hearing everybody. It's Hannah, Hannah, not Heather. Hannah, Hannah. Hannah. okay, pardon that, me. It will, it will be that. That's what it's called. Yeah, deep cleaning. And then March 16th is the missionary committee meeting, okay? So we want to keep those numbers before you. We'll get them on the bulletin so you'll know about that as well. So good to be with you. Don't forget to pray for me. Wednesday, Corey, same day, has surgery. He has a, uh, uh, a nose surgery. It's going to be pretty intense. Pray for him in my hip surgery. I appreciate it very much. Yes, sir. Pray for him. All right. Any birthdays this past week? Anybody? Oh, I see. East of Stern, Stern. church family that celebrated that last week or coming up this week or coming up soon you know you're not going to be here okay very good all right what you do you broke a leg you fractured a leg me and she broke her leg no oh. well, to touch her clothes so she can't walk okay you can't walk no, there's something wrong with your leg anyway but anyway i'm glad you made it today all right Amen. i'm glad you made it Let's sing a chorus, then we'll be going to our classes. And I love this song. I've loved it ever since I was small. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Let's all stand and sing it together.
like 626 in her hymnal or something like that. I've looked that one up. All right, good job with that. You may be dismissed to your classes. <laughs> We will continue in John 5 in just a few moments. <clears throat> we just got word, and this is not from a seizure, but uh, Kara, Tom told us this morning that Kara had to take Olivia in for breathing treatments because she wasn't breathing right. And um, both Gideon and Olivia have croup. So pray for them. If it ain't one thing, it's another, you know, bless their hearts. But uh, pray for those kids that they would get well. Howie, you heard the message the other day about Howie's uh, rehab place had COVID in it. I was heading up there, but I turned around. I, I, we didn't make it. So I don't want to be near that, but uh, especially with my surgery coming up. And keep praying for Dorothy as well. as um, <clears throat> She's been through a lot of hip pain and some other issues going on. So Dorothy needs your prayers as well as, well as Howie. Um, Floyd and Miriam, uh, that was a blessing last week, Miriam singing, sharing a little bit about what's going on with them. Keep praying for Floyd and also their son, Wayne. So pray for Floyd, Miriam, and Wayne, if you will, and uh, keep them in our prayers. I'm, I'm not, wouldn't be surprised if it ain't too long we'll start seeing Sue Helms back in church. I think she's recovering uh, better and better. Keep praying for her. Um, I got a text from um, uh, Matt Farrell. If you don't remember him, he was the young man who grew up behind us, has a large family, Matt. And he has, I did the funeral for one of his brothers. Um, Matt was in the uh, army, left and went in the army, and then he got married. And um, that marriage failed, but he remarried. And the lady he married, Gina, uh, they've been going to church. They found a good church down in Tennessee. We were so excited to hear that. He kind of counts us as a second set of parents. We talk quite often. We've stopped to see him on our way down to South and had lunch with him before. Uh, Matt told us that his wife, Gina, had a, a minor stroke mm -hmm. because of a blockage. You know, she's only 28, 29 years of age, but she had to have emergency surgery to remove this blockage in her um, carotid artery. So. Mm -hmm. They were actually out in Colorado visiting when this all happened. So she's, she's over this weekend been in an intensive care. So if you will pray for Gina Farrell, please. And um, yesterday I met with uh, Bert and Ken and um, uh, Shelly to talk about the upcoming service, which is on April the 1st. You've probably already seen the <coughs> obituary has already been out and available on April the 1st at 11 o'clock here. There is a 9.30 to 11 family visitation and so forth. So pray, we'll be having a luncheon for the family and stuff for that uh, memorial service for Linda, April the 1st. Pastor Mark mentioned that his dad um, is pretty lonely. He sends him food so he doesn't have to try to get out and go anywhere, but he's pretty lonely. Keep praying for Pastor Richard Yates and that bad situation that he's in down there. Um, don't forget our college students and uh, uh, probably back into the heat of studies right now. And uh, we think of all that. Pastor Mark mentioned that he has a youth conference this coming June that he's building up to and uh, ask prayer for that youth conference. Also, um, I mentioned my surgery, Corey's surgery, both on the 15th uh, Brother um, Zane Aberger has a uh, rural church conference up on the 27th, I believe is of February, up at Lakeview. I went last year, it was very good, and uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to this year, but I'm going to try. I'll say more about that in the morning service. How about you? Anybody have a prayer request? Yes, Barb? Yeah, my mom, she had, I think she said something about kidney, kidney issues, and she's got to be rechecked or something or other. Okay. Let's pray for Lorraine Peterson. She's going to be 93 
three days long. Wow. Okay. How's Mrs. Dannenberg doing? Uh, her, she's holding her own, um, but her memory has been not good. Uh, it's hard on me thinking about leaving now. Oh, sure. Knowing that she's hoping. So her memory's slipping. Does she have times of Yeah, Yeah, this? she remembers us when we come into the room and stuff, but... If she starts talking, she's talking about things that yeah. generally don't make any sense. Right. Or, you know. That's hard. It's been very difficult. All right. We will, we will continue to pray for Mrs. Dannenberg. Shirley Thank Dannenberg. You. Carol? I was just wondering, did Floyd have his soap on her today? You know, I didn't ever hear about that. I need to find out. I'll have to give um, Miriam a call. She mentioned that Sunday? I believe so. I missed it. I missed it. I know she mentioned... You know, uh, when the last time I talked to her, Mary and I talked to her before Sunday last week, uh, she was pretty upbeat about everything. I know he's still being fed by, uh, you know, uh, two. So this scope was going to, like, investigate how the progress went. All right, let's... Uh, I thought she had said it's very much. <coughs> I'll check on that. Thank you for asking, though. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Yes, uh, Michelle. Um, I don't remember if we got mentioned already or not, but our co my cousin Randy Wiggins. Yes. Um, he did pass away. On the bright side, he was a believer, and my mom and I drove across state for the funeral Friday, and it was a really nice service. Um, the Lord was magnified. Santa Soledad was there. He was part of a Christian Motorcycle Association, took some prison ministry in the past, and it was just a really nice service where the Lord was lifted up. Praise God. Mm -hmm. That's great news. All right. Sorry to hear it was passing, but that was uh, he had gotten an infection in his good lung, and that did him in. But his uh, his other that was the um, transplant was okay, I guess. So, who else? Anybody else with testimony or with a prayer request? Sorry. All right. Let's uh, let's pray before we get into John five. Okay, Lord. So many things. So many burdens. Represented even in a small crowd like this, Lord, we we know that we have a lot of things that we're thinking about. And as I talked to other preachers last night and see all of the things that people are going through across this country, Christians, uh, Lord, persecutions, um, just the tide is turning in many ways against the things of the Word of God and against believers, and of course against you, Lord. But help us not to lose sight of the big picture and the fact that you warned us you said marvel not the world hate you help us to stay firm to our beliefs to our love for you to the word of god and not to vary lord i thank you for uh, how that you answered prayer even in these difficult times like with uh, gideon and olivia having sickness help it not to spread to the other girls and i pray they would have a complete recovery lord I pray for Howie and Dorothy. You know what they need, Lord. I do pray for Floyd and Miriam and their son, Wayne. And I, I pray that uh, whatever they found out, that it would be uh, give them encouragement. Uh, whether these uh, radiation treatments did anything or not, we just pray that it did. I pray for Sue Helms. I pray for uh, this lady, Gina, Matt's wife, Gina Farrell. Help her to get back home and to get out of the hospital, please. I pray for Pastor Richard Gates and his loneliness. Just comfort him, Lord. Give him the comfort of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Father, for the college students, wherever they are, uh, in the midst of their studies, some, uh, Lord, preparing for uh, finishing up, and some, Lord, uh, just looking at a summer of busyness. And I pray, Father, for all of them. Lord, I pray for this youth conference that Pastor Mark is requesting prayer for. May it be uh, a wonderful, wonderful outreach and we can see kids saved. <coughs> Lord, I pray for Barb's mom, Lorraine Peterson. I pray that you would help her with these kidney issues, Lord. And uh, thank you for sustaining her. Thank you for uh, helping Shirley Dannenberg as well. 
Lord, we know that uh, at her age, her memory is going. And it's a sad note for Carol and Les as they get ready to leave. But just give them great peace to know that when you call her home, Lord, that um, you will precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I just pray that you will give Carol great peace as she gets ready to depart and leave this place to go back to Africa. I pray for the Randy Wiggins family. Thank you for the wonderful uh, testimony of glory to you in his service and the uh, clear presentation of the gospel. I pray for Linda's service coming up in April that, that we would have the same here on these premises to glorify you and to make sure that no one goes out of this place without hearing a clear presentation of the gospel. Now bless the word to us, Lord. It's so amazing. It's so wonderful. Help us to have that reverential awe, uh, that longing to know more about it. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, chapter 5 of John, we're going to pick it up in verse 17. <coughs> John 5, 17. Now you know the story, how that Jesus had healed the man, the impotent man that was laying by the pool that the angel stirred up <coughs> from season to season, and how that he said, come, rise up and walk, and he did. And of course, the, the religious um, self-righteous ones, the Pharisees, the scribes, the various people that are in that category, took issue with that. I shared the story about the legs on the on the uh, communion table and how that we can sometimes get distracted and not see the greater thing. People were getting saved, children were getting saved, and somebody couldn't stand that, that we didn't have legs on the table. Well, we did before long. These people could not see the good that a man not only was healed, but, but God saved him. And, and what a glorious thing that was. They can't get over the, the Sabbath, the fact that the Sabbath was violated. And so they are boiling mad. They're seething. He said, what man that said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? He said, I wish not who he was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away. I've been reading it in 13, a multitude being that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth them in the temple and said unto him, said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come up unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Totally blind to the great things that God just did. Isn't that sad? I have seen some very self-righteous, uh, judgmental Christians that have also acted like this when God's done a great thing in somebody's life. They're more worried about picking things apart, getting the moat out of somebody else's eye when they got a two by four sticking out of their own. And instead of praising God and rejoicing that somebody got saved or somebody made a, a commitment to the Lord to, for full-time service or to go to the mission field or whatever. And it's just sad. It's sad when people are blinded by what's really important. These men were definitely blinded. But Jesus answered them. Here we are reading in this. My father worketh hitherto, and I work. My first point is the son bears witness of the father. And of course, they don't like that either. Look at the next verse. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but let me ask you this. Did he? Did Jesus break the Sabbath? Because he was sinless, wasn't he? But the way it's saying it is it's from their point of view. Not only had he broken the Sabbath, but, all, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. And so that was the other thing that angered them. Because what Jesus claimed to be is God. They don't like that. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what the, he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him 
all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Interesting. That's an interesting thought right there. You know that the great white throne judgment, that's Jesus sitting on that throne. You know that the judgment seat of Christ is called that. That's for us believers. It's the judgment seat of Christ, the bema. It is immediately after the rapture for those who get caught up in the rapture. I believe it's for every person after they die, according to Hebrews 9, 27, where it says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment and I, I'm not going to finish that phrase because that's part of a statement, larger statement. But anyway, death, then the judgment. Jesus has been committed all judgment. Interesting, isn't it? That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Now notice how this would really, really stick them in the side. I mean, you talk about a thorn in their flesh and their conscience if they had one, because they on numerous occasions dishonored Jesus, didn't they? When you get to chapter eight, you'll see ye do dishonor me. When they said, we're not born, we be not born of fornication. We're not illegitimate. And that's what they accused him. They were dishonoring Jesus. And by his statement right here, if you dishonor the son, you're dishonoring the father. Interesting. So it's a clear statement of the identical nature of these two individuals, the father and the son. Uh, and we'll talk more about that even in the morning service. <clears throat> verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. What a great verse. John 5, 24. First, you have to hear. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Romans 10 goes through that list. You know, where it says, how shall they hear without a preacher? And so forth. But faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me. There is an, a recognition when you hear the words of Christ. You say, well, how did we hear? Well, we have the Bible. They got to hear it in person. Some just ignored it. Some received it. Some, yeah, they thought about it. They, they contemplated it. They put it off to their own demise. But he says, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, someday will get eternal life. Is that what your Bible says? No. Half everlasting life. That's a great, there's a great song along that line. Verily, verily, I say unto you, it, it, half everlasting life, the end of that song says. You have it. If you're saved, you have it. Your eternal life has already begun the moment you got saved and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. One of the requests as I talk to the family, because I see that word condemnation comes to mind, is John 3. Uh, I can't remember the exact verses, but I think it goes through 18, 3, 3 through 18, that uh, Linda wrote down she wants preached at her memorial. That's a clear message of the gospel because John 3, 16 is in there where Jesus says you must be born again to Nicodemus, all of that passage. And pray for me, I'll be forming a, a message on that wonderful passage. But here he says, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Isn't that a great thought? From death unto life. It's really amazing the, the culture of death that just seems to be everywhere in our world today. I'm going to read some stuff to you later. <clears throat> how many of you saw this wicked satanic, I hope none of you did, but how many of you saw reports about this wicked satanic Garbage going on at the Grammys last mm -hmm. Sunday. What, what terrible evil that is. Mm -hmm. And they're just flaunting it. And they're just like shaking their fists at God. 
Well, this is the natural outcropping of people who've rejected God's word somewhere in their life. And they don't want to hear these wonderful words of life. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me more their beauty see. Wonderful words of life. Uh, they don't want to hear that. So they double down and triple down and they keep going and keep grinding towards this, this death that awaits them. This eternal death. Think of what it is. An eternal separation from God in the lake of fire. Wow. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, <clears throat> and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Now, I know this sounds like a general resurrection. I know. But what his main statement is, <clears throat> Jesus himself has power over all dead. Look at the next verse. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, And hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Now this is not preaching work salvation. But they that have done good are they that have received the the what verse 24 talks about. And they that have done evil are the ones that have rejected what verse 24 is talking about. So it's pretty cut and dry. Receive Christ, you will have life. Reject Christ, you'll have eternal death. But it's amazing how he says here that he's been given authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. Interesting phrase. I think I'll take a few minutes to talk about it. Son of man. We know it's the preferred phrase that Jesus referred to himself as son of man. It seems to be the key phrase in the book of Luke that Luke uses as Jesus is referring to himself as the son of man. Where we first see it though is in Daniel 7. In fact, let's go over there a minute because it, <clears throat> it deserves our attention and our um, looking into it a little more. Son of man. Daniel 7, 13 says this, And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And this is none other than Jesus, of course. And But the point is, Son of Man is the idea of, that he has the authority over all mankind. Not just the Jews, but also the Gentiles. Yes, he's going to reign. Matthew presents him as the king, and he will reign in Jerusalem. He will reign in, in his, um, you could say his capital will be at Jerusalem when he reigns for a thousand years. But he is the king of kings and lord of lords. He's reigning over all of mankind, uh, not just the Jews. He's the king of the Jews. Notice that he put it in three languages above him on the cross. Uh, the king of the Jews. And they said, no, you you write. He said he was the king of the Jews. And Pilate said, what I've written, I've written. And the true testimony, he is the king of the Jews. But he's also, as the son of man, he's an authority. This goes back before time began. It's in a designation of the fact that Jesus has the authority. And that's, go back to John 5. He hath given him authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. So great, great thought there. Great and interesting phrase. So the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. So we see the son bears witness of the father. And that doesn't set well with these deniers and unbelievers uh, and they, they just, they're even getting more intense and they're going to try to get rid of him. And of course, it takes them three years of hearing these things. And finally they do. Nothing was by accident. Nothing was by surprise with God. God had it planned out to the exact moment. Uh, even, I believe it was Caiaphas. 
Because he was the high priest, he even made a statement that was accurate. He said, you don't know nothing, I'm paraphrasing. It's expedient that one man die for the whole nation. He didn't realize that, that was exactly true. And Jesus was going to be the one that dies for the whole nation. He's thinking in the limited terms of Israel and so that Rome doesn't come and, and so forth. But he's going to die for the whole world, according to 1 John 2. Let's look at the uh, verses 30 through 31. Look at the witness of the father. The father bears witness. I'm talking about the son bearing witness of the father. Now the father is going to bear witness to the son. He says, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Jump over to 36. This is the same thing. But I have greater witness than that of John, because we'll talk about him in a minute. <coughs> For the works of the Father, which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me, that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. By the way, Christian, you have received, you have believed, like he said there. You do have the word of Christ dwelling in you, the word of the Father in you, because you have received him, but these unbelievers have not. So he says, but him ye believe not. So that's the work, the Father bears witness to the Son. Thirdly, the witness of John the Baptist is talked about in 32 through 35. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that, the witness which he witnesseth is of me is true. <clears throat> Remember his main statement when Jesus was coming? Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John, we just read a portion of it back in, and I believe it was in chapter 4, where he says, he, uh, he that was before, he that came after me was before me. His recognition of Jesus' eternality, of Jesus' deity. And so, uh, Jesus is just saying, yeah, his witness of me was true. Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. John clearly bore witness that Jesus was the Messiah. There is no doubt. John made it clear, and these people couldn't accept him. Then he says, he was a burning and a shining light. And you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. And I think he's mainly talking to the crowd in general. They were, they were excited when John came and, and all that he was saying. But boy, that some of them there could not swallow the message that this man, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? This man, a Galilean? See, they didn't investigate further. They believed the rumors. They believe the lies. Satan is a purveyor of lies, folks. He's the father of liars. We're not born of fornication. You'll see it when we get to chapter 8. So he says, he changes and transfers back to the father in 36 through 38. But I have greater witness than that of John. And that, of course, is the father. Now, I want you to see one verse that talks about the witness of the scripture. I've quoted this verse many times. For a while I was quoting it wrong, finally got it right and got it down in my brain. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Powerful words of Jesus, talking to a group of people who thought they were saved. In them ye think ye have eternal life. Why did they think they were saved, by the way? Because they were self-righteous. They thought they were keeping the law. Remember, we started talking about these, this series on the Ten Commandments, and what was the thing in that first message? What did we say about that? Nobody can keep the law but Jesus Christ. And see, they, they, they were deceiving them on their own selves by thinking they had kept the law. Uh, they were so careful to tithe mint and tea leaves or whatever. He says, you strain at gnats, but you swallow camels. It's a that's an exaggerated description, but you know what it means. Worrying about the little tiny details as if it's, oh, we've got to be so careful. But so what? So what if we uh, devour a widow's house? 
So what if uh, uh, we're not faithful to our wives? So what if we don't do these other things? It's nobody's business. But Jesus knew their hearts, and he says, you strain at gnats and swallow camels. So you can see, he says, search the scriptures. The scriptures are great witness of Christ. And um, the more, I, the longer I live serving the Lord, and the longer I study the Bible, the more I see how the Lord has woven the scriptures all together. It is a testimony of Christ. It is a wonderful and magnificent, uh, amazing thing. <clears throat> the testimony of the scriptures. Now, all they had when he said this was the Old Testament. Some would call it the law, but they had the law, the prophets. They had what we have as the Old Testament. They had that. He says, search the scriptures. That's a good thing for all of us to do is to search the scriptures. Amen? And then finally, I, I titled this last section through 47, the witness against the Pharisees. And what is that witness? We'll be looking for it. You'll see it. And you will not come to me that you might have life. We saw that phrase over and over in our study of the, and we're still seeing it from time. We've studied the minor prophets already. We're in the middle of the uh, major prophets. We're about to finish Jeremiah. After we do Lamentations, we'll go into Ezekiel. But what did we see several times? What did we see? And ye would not. And ye would not. And ye would not. Jesus said it in the New Testament as well as he wept over Jerusalem. How many times would I have gathered thee? And ye would not. And so he says the same thing here. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, and ye have not the love of God in you. Whoa. He knows us too. Sometimes I wonder. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. Sometimes I wonder, do I really have the love of God in me? When I check my heart according to the scriptures and I see the passage that says, love not the world, First John 2, 15. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not. I find sometimes too much of a love of the world in this heart. Don't you? I find sometimes too much of a satisfaction with the temporal, the here and now. Don't you? And I have to question, I have to ask, do I really love the Lord? I say so in a, in a convicting way. And I say so because I want to love the Lord more. If Jesus were here right now, standing in front of me, would he say, you have not the love of God in you. Yeah. Peter, uh, John, in his letters, would later say in his epistles, he would say, if you love not your brother, whom you have seen, how can you love God whom you have not seen? And that's a pretty good litmus test we all ought to check. Are you loving each other? Are you loving the brethren? Something to think about. So, but he knew, he says, I know you. He knows us as well. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Wait. That's going to happen. Wait for it. We'll be in heaven when this is revealed. But the Antichrist will be so lavish with praise and the Jews will just fall over themselves to please him. You know how I know this? When I read Isaiah 30, there's two places. It says your covenant with death and they call it your covenant with hell. And when I read Daniel 9, 24 through 27, that it talks about the prince of the people that shall come. He will make a covenant with Israel. They're going to fall all over themselves thinking they have found their Messiah and he's going to stab them in the back. It's called the abomination of desolation that Jesus talks about. So if somebody else comes in his own name, him ye will receive. It's, it's going to happen. I believe it's close, too. I believe this man is walking on this earth right now. I don't know who he is. I'm not going to put up a, 
Well, let's put up a, a list of letters and numbers and multiply them out and come up with, now we know who the Antichrist is. That's foolishness. We do not know. The man of sin will not be revealed until he who letteth be taken out of the way. That's the Holy Spirit, the church. When the church is gone, well, you think sin is bad now with all this Satan worship and transgender uh, abnormalities and insanity. Just think how bad it's going to be. Wow. That's why when the rapture happens, and I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I know the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive. I hope the Lord takes every baby out of this world. I hope the Lord takes every person who is not at the age of accountability so they don't have to go through that seven years. I don't know. He might. I don't know. Almost done. He says, how can you believe which receive not, receive honor of one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you. And here's the answer. Who's the witness against them? Moses. Even Moses, in whom ye trust. For he had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. That harkens back to that verse 39, search the scriptures. He wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Pretty, pretty damning evidence, we'd have to say. Moses wrote of Christ. They couldn't see it. And they couldn't accept it. And they couldn't believe it. Wow. He said in another place, it'll be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know exactly what that means, but it sounds like there's levels of eternal pain and suffering based on these people who had it right there in front of them, right under their noses and rejected Christ. Sad. Lord, thank you for your precious word. Lord, we, we trust you. We trust you that, and we believe you came from the Father. We believe, Lord, that you are the one. We pray, Father, that you would help us to spread the word, to speak to other people about their condition, to talk to people about whether they're going to heaven or not. Lord, I pray that you will just give us a desire to see souls saved. Thank you for these promises that if we believe we have everlasting life. How soothing, how precious is that promise. Go with us now in Jesus' name.